Hey there, folks. Uh, so I've got a little bit of an interesting device here. Um, Funny Playing had just sent this to me yesterday. I've had this all of 24 hours, uh, so I haven't had too much time with it. I have played with it in passing, um, ran a few games on it, etc., etc. Um, but forgive me, my attention has been divided among some of the other things they sent as well. Um, more on this stuff later. Um, but uh, it, it's, you know, I, I, I've known this thing was coming out for a long time, and I'm, I'm excited that it's finally here. Uh, so this is the Retro Pixel Pocket. Um, there's not a whole lot of markings or, quite frankly, info on this device out there from the manufacturer. Uh, there are a few other videos that some people made. Um, they were sent uh, some sample units. Uh, my understanding is that Funny Playing had reached out to them to, to try and help ease along the software development, and they sent them a unit as part of the compensation for that. Um, unfortunately, the software on this thing can use a little bit of help still, uh, but in its current state, it is more than good enough. Um, I was planning on taking a little bit more time to, to, to get to know this thing before I did a video on it, uh, but... Like I said, I, I've had this thing less than 24 hours and then Funny Playing put them up for sale this morning, so now's as good a time as any, right? Um, so this is Funny Playing's newest emulator device. It is inspired very, it, it, it's very, very similar to the actual Game Boy Pocket uh, that the name lends itself to, uh, to the point where it's using the same CAD for most of the design. Uh, so it's a different D-pad and different face buttons, but the start and select are the same. Uh, you even got these same little divots on there. And yes, I know this specific one isn't a funny playing shell, but this is, and you know, it's, it's all the same. Um, got the same cutouts for, well, not on this side. But on this side, you've got the same cutout for the volume and contrast wheels, respectively. On the back, even, it's got the exact same screw pattern, which is something they didn't have to do, especially with these bottom two screws. You notice one of them is a little bit higher than the other. That is how the Game Boy Pocket is on the inside. Uh, there are one, there's six screws holding the housing together for the Game Boy Pocket, and then another three on the inside. Um, funny playing just swapped these two screws with the two motherboard screws uh, and that's how we ended up with this um, I ended up doing the exact same thing with a um, with a laminated Game Boy pocket shell that I was working on at some point but it's a long history in fact they ended up using the exact same screen design that that I came up with um, I mean I actually did pitch this to them and they didn't seem that interested especially because it had to physically shift the else the display up in the unit but that's that's for another time um i'm glad they ended up doing that though because now we have a fully laminated display and it looks there it goes okay and it looks absolutely sick um the power switch is momentary you just kind of slide it over and hold it for a second and then it'll boot up um, I'm still not quite used to it because it, I feel like it requires a little bit more holding time uh, than other power switches of this design. Um, like, for example, a, a DS Lite, you don't have to hold that at all. You just kind of finger it up and boom. But anyway, that one's also for another time. We get this bad boy fired up and here is what we got. I'm going to go ahead and kill that light. Um, this is the interface that it comes with. Uh, please forgive me for not showing the uh, unboxing experience as it were. Uh, this thing arrived in a bubble wrap bag pretty much as is. Uh, this was not, I, I'm not the first person to have their hands on this physical unit, not counting funny playing. Uh, so there may have been some customizations done. I don't know. Um, wait for the Retro Game Core video. They, they, uh, this is their bread and butter. They're, they'll, they'll put out a way better video on this thing, but 
I'm assuming they don't have one yet, so I wanted to get some info out there now since they're up for sale now. Um, anyway, you get this bad boy powered up. It's got a custom UI, but it is just Android. You can go into the settings there and, you know, if that looks familiar, good, because that's Android. Uh, it's an older version of Android 7.11, which isn't the end of the world. It's totally fine. Uh, but it also means that it's going to be really behind on security patches and such. Um, so you don't necessarily want to bring this thing online. I did, of course. More on that later. Um, but it it's fine for what it is. I mean, you're not going to be browsing the web on this thing. You're not going to be downloading apps. It's fine. I just... it is what it is. Anyway. Um, the Funny Playing web page, uh, sale page does list a few of the specs, but it doesn't quite go over all of them. Uh, namely, it does not mention the CPU, so there you go. There's a quad-core A64 in this thing. Uh, it is a, it, it's an older chipset. Um, I think there are, I think there's one other emulator device like this that uses that chipset. Um, I'll do a little bit more research and throw it in the description if you want to look up and see exactly what kind of performance you can expect on this thing. Uh, I do know that um, the firmware for this thing isn't locked down, uh, so it, it would be relatively easy to install custom firmware if you want. I have no idea how you do it. I don't know if you need to do that through the SD card slot or through USB or, or, or what have you, but I know that there are options available um, well, I know that the door is op open for options when they become available. There we go. Uh, otherwise, you know, you probably don't need to go into the settings um, very often. I do recommend when you first get the thing to pop into settings and uh, set the date and time. Go into the date and time menu. I genuinely have no idea how to manually set the time. Um, because this UI really seems uh, targeted towards a touch screen, and I don't know how to change any of these values um, with the control pad. Uh, it's, it's probably possible to plug in like a mouse or a keyboard or something uh, to do that, but this isn't a touch screen, and it's kind of a pain in the butt to set the time. So what I did was I just set it to automatic and then connected it to the internet so I could set the time that way. I couldn't figure out how to set the time otherwise. Um, if you're not, if you don't intend on playing any games that use real-time clock, it literally does not matter if you ever set the time on this thing. But the only reason I say set the time first is because if you do play those games, um, and then set the time afterwards, it's going to throw off the time in your games. Uh, but beyond that, there's really not a whole lot that needs to be messed with in here. Um, continue going over the specs. It's only got like a gig of DDR3 or something. I think it mentioned on the listing. Uh, it only has eight gigabytes of internal storage and about half of that is taken up by the uh, system itself. Oh, there you go. Wait, no. That's all my ROMs and such I've loaded. Um, yeah, there, there's like seven and a half gigabytes free when you plug it in and um, about three and a half gigabytes of that was already taken up by its system and and all of the data that was already on this thing, apps, ROMs, etc. Uh, I don't know what it comes with in terms of ROMs because, um, like I said, I wasn't the first person who had his hands on this thing. Uh, so they, they probably loaded up a few ROMs to test out, uh, but I'm guessing they didn't load up all the BIOS files. This thing comes with uh, RetroArch, uh, PPSSPP and uh, Flycast, J2ME, and OpenBore. Um, and it comes with all of the BIOS files that all of those apps need. So you just got to plug it in, load up your ROMs, and, your, and Bob Jaunty, I guess. Um, or you can just throw them on an SD card and throw them in the slot. Uh, so I guess while we're at it, let's take a brief overview of the device. So on the front, you have basically the exact same control schema as a Game Boy Pocket, except you have two more face buttons. You have an X and a Y button. And this is the uh, Nintendo layout, not the Xbox layout. So you have Y on the left, X on the top. 
uh, which I guess makes sense. It's very, very inspired by Game Boy Pocket. Um, on the top, we just have our power slider. I don't like this text. Why is my light off? Why do I keep turning that off? Okay. Um, I don't like this text. I think, come on, you can do it. You can focus. There we go. I don't really like the text. I think it's kind of misleading because it's a momentary switch. So even while it's on, the switch text reads off. Also, it's extremely crooked. I don't know what's up with that. On the right hand side, we just have a, um, a rotary encoder for the volume. Uh, down for down, up for up. Uh, you can also press it in. There is a button here, but I don't know what this button is mapped to. It doesn't seem to do anything in the UI or in any of the games. Um, it might be something you can map to... It would be useful for something like RetroArch to pull up the um, configuration UI while you're in game, uh, but by default it does not do that. On the left hand side we have another one of those rotary encoders. This one is labeled Backlight. Uh, and it changes the brightness. It's pretty self-explanatory. This one also has a button. This button's not going to do anything when you're in the UI, uh, but what it does is it's effectively the Android home button, and it'll bring you back to this home screen, uh, pretty much no matter what you're doing. Uh, and then on the bottom, we have a stereo headphone jack, um, well, presumably stereo. I'd actually haven't tested it out yet, and a USB Type-C data port. Uh, I'm fairly certain it's just a 2.0 speed port, uh, but you can plug it into a computer and it just mounts the Android file system. There's no drivers needed. You can just drag and drop ROMs onto it. Um, uses MTP like pretty much anything after Android 4.0 does uh, instead of MSC. Uh, that way you don't have to like that way both Android and whatever you have plugged into can access the file system simultaneously, whereas MSC would, you know, it's a little bit smoother, uh, works a little bit better when you have things plugged in, but it means that the system can't access the file system while it's plugged in. So trade-offs, um, it's fine, it works. You know, there's not a whole lot of storage, so depending on what you want to play on this thing, you probably want to use that micro SD slot. Um, on the back here, we have these two sticker cutouts. The top one is a little bit shorter than the stock Game Boy Pocket sticker cutout, but it's about the same width, it looks like. Uh, but the bottom one is the exact same width as the, or exact same size and dimensions as the uh, battery door sticker on the Game Boy Pocket. Yeah, so if you have some of the custom stickers, you can bring them over. I genuinely thought these things would be coming with stickers, but this one didn't, and um, the ones on Funny Playing's listing at the moment don't have them either, so I don't really know what's going on with that. Uh, I'm also under the impression that it should be coming in multiple different colors, but right now the only option is gray, so I hope you like gray. Uh, anyway, I think that's about it for hardware overview. Let's go ahead and... Um, I'm gonna pop into the RetroPixel app. This is a custom app made for this specific device. Uh, you can also just use RetroArch if you want, or PPSSPP, or Flycast, or what you know, whatever you're playing. Uh, but the RetroPixel app, you launch that, it brings you into this um, kind of themed retro wave style launcher. Um, I believe every time you launch it, it just scans the file system for new games and such. I don't have that much loaded up on it, but I do have I do have a relatively decent selection we can go over. But before we get into that, let's go into options. Uh, you can configure ROM scanning and such like that. Um, one of one of my biggest complaints about this app so far is that it's intuitive, yeah, but it's kind of hard to see what you have selected sometimes. Uh, so 
might be worth going in here and changing the theme from default to something else. I don't know. I don't, I don't think that's better. Oh good, we have several blank ones. Actually, you know what? I'm fine with that. <laughs> that's better. Uh, but you can, you can, it looks like you can set up and install custom themes, so that's, that's pretty decent. Um, anyway. You can auto start this app. I guess this is called Dig Internally. Decent amount of options, but this is just a this is just a um, a skin really. Um, this doesn't this doesn't do any of the emulation. Oh, well that theme actually sucks for that. So let's change that. I don't have my games, I don't have the images set up for all my games, so I don't know what most of those are. I think those themes are just broken. Oops, I don't want to edit. See, I'm already losing my place. It's so subtle. I think that's a, um, I think that's just a quirk of using Android. Space magic. Okay, I think this one's my favorite so far. Okay. So if you're looking at a device like this, um, you're probably looking at it for something like Game Boy and Game Boy Color games, and it's pretty damn good at that. Um, I'm gonna jump into Pokemon Silver ROM that I dumped over onto this thing. See, it just switches over to RetroArch, boots it up, hit a button, it maps the keypad, and then you're just in game. Uh, one thing I have noticed with the real time clock games, I told you, you know, make sure you set your time, but my time keeps resetting, and I don't know why. Because it worked up until I actually set the time properly in the system. And like it, it's defaulting to the right time. That's what time it is right now. Uh, I was off by a minute, but that might have just been me when I said it. Um, for Game Boy games, this is really hard to beat. It's genuinely really good. Um, one of my complaints, specifically for Game Boy games, is if you are used to playing Game Boy games on a Game Boy, um, well, volume is usually on the left, whereas on this device it's on the right. So on the actual pocket, you know, the thing that it's based off of, you have your contrast dial, which adjusts the screen contrast, and then on the left you have your volume wheel, which down for up and up for down. It's kind of weird. I I get what they were going for, but it's it's backwards in both ways because in this case it's down for down and up for up. But it is what it is. Um, that is something that can be adjusted in software, hypothetically. Um, it would have to be adjusted on the Android portion of this device. It's not something we can just go into a config and edit, at least that I know of. I'm not that deep into Android, um, but I can say it would be it would be pretty nice to see like a Batacera port or something for this thing. But like, if you want a Pokemon machine, this is extremely hard to beat. Um, you can just save it like normal; it'll retain your save, uh, and then. Press start and select simultaneously twice to exit the game and it brings you back to the menu or you can hit the home button and that brings you back to the home uh, but don't necessarily want to do that um, if you're using the app to launch your games 
Uh, it also works pretty well for Game Boy Advance games, though it's a little bit less than ideal uh, just because of the screen form factor. You, you end up with the kind of same effect that the analog pocket has, where you have this um, full screen hardware, but with these thick black borders on the top and bottom. But like, it plays fine, and it looks good, so I don't really see any major issues with it. And for what it's worth, I want to go on a quick tangent here. This is going to bug me if I don't mention it. I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, analog pocket that was... Uh, <laughs> That came out not that recently, but in the grand scheme of things, I guess it was relatively recent. I didn't ever actually look at the size of this thing. I just heard analog pocket, and my mind latched onto the word pocket and assumed since it's based on a Game Boy, it's gonna be Game Boy pocket size. It is very not pocket size. Whereas this thing is quite literally pocket size. Yes, it uses emulation, and yes, it's not compatible at all with any carts. Oh, and you have your L and R but buttons back here. I don't think I ever mentioned that, but that was probably obvious. Um, yeah, so th this is quite a bit more pocketable, I think. Um, and quite frankly, if you have an analog pocket and you're not even using it with carts, there's effectively no difference between the two, aside from size and potentially comfort. They're both emulators, for the most part. Uh, let's talk about weight. So I think the analog pocket's the best comparison here. We have 10.2 ounces, or 290 grams. Whereas the retro pixel pocket is 172 grams, or six ounces. I'm gonna mute that, I'm sorry. I can go all morning without getting a message, and then I get four of them. Oh, that was only three. Um, but yeah, for, for Game Boy games, which I think, I feel this is what the console was designed for, you know, Game Boy games. It's really, really hard to go wrong with something like this. Uh, oh, that's too far. We should be there. My biggest problem with this thing so far, and I am confident in saying that this is an issue with my specific unit and not something inherent with um, these units, is the A button, it feels like it needs a little bit more pressure to press than the other three face buttons. Uh, so there are a lot of times where I'll tap the A button, but it doesn't quite register. Uh, that being said, I feel like it's broken in quite a bit and it's nowhere near the issue it was yesterday. But let's save that. Unfortunately, I was not able to import my save for Pokemon Emerald. I couldn't figure that out in the uh, 30 seconds I spent on it. Um, but importing saves for like Pokemon Silver and well, all the Game Boy and Game Boy Color games was very easy. You just drag it and drop it in the exact same folder. Uh, but, you know, this thing does more than Game Boy and Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance, so let's see what else we got. I have not tried any Mega Drive or Sega Genesis games. I can't imagine we'd have any issues, but try it anyway. I mean, that certainly looks fine to me. But, of course, this is the action. The intro! I'll pick a different game that doesn't have nearly as long an intro. Forgive me, I haven't played these games in probably two decades, so. Eh, 
Yeah, there we go. I mean, it's a little weird with the four button layout instead of the six button, but sure. I consider that completely playable. Oh no, Marines! Anyway, that's enough of that. Works pretty well. Um, I can't imagine any Sega Genesis games are going to have any issues or Mega Drive. I've never played the Mega Drive version of this game. I'm very intimately familiar with the Super Nintendo version, though. Yeah, I'm not doing so well, but it's fine. Um, oh, you know what? Let's swing back to Game Boy real quick. Uh, I want to show on the default settings what the um, screen flicker effect looks like. So, if you've seen any of my Game Boy videos, you've heard this spiel probably dozens of times. Uh, but original Game Boy consoles didn't have a way of doing transparency. Uh, on any of the objects on screen, but the original screens were hot garbage. So what devs did was they would flicker a sprite on and off as quickly as they could to try and, um, to, 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 to generate a transparent object. Uh, and because the pixel response time on those original screens was just hot garbage, you know, it hid the effect. It worked out really nicely. Uh, fortunately, or unfortunately, depending on your point of view, uh, newer screens respond quite a bit better, and now we just see that flickering. This game, the entire background of this game, there are at least two different layers that I've noticed. Uh, both are transparent. So you see the clouds passing over the ground, etc., etc. Um... It's a genuinely cool effect, especially on original hardware. But on stuff like this, it's kind of a flickery mess. Now, I know the back end for this emulator is RetroArch, so we could probably just go in and change the settings for that and fix that issue. But I don't know how to do that from this UI. Uh, we would have to quit the game, as far as I know, go into RetroArch, and... Um, you know, edit the cores from here, but I don't really want to do that. There is a learning curve with RetroArch, and quite frankly, I just never put in the time, and I, if I try doing it now, we're going to be here all day, so that's not happening. Um, Super Nintendo seems... I, I actually haven't tried it, but I can't imagine it would have any issues. Probably wasn't the best game to start with for Super Nintendo. That is a super long intro.
Yeah, this is fine. I've totally forgotten the controls, but this is fine. I am familiar with this game, but not playing it with a Super Nintendo controller is throwing me off. He says as he's totally forgetting where to go. The shoulder buttons are fine. Um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about them. Like they feel fine to press. They work fine. They're just kind of in a weird spot for how I hold this thing. Because let me pause that and flip my hands over. You can see my fingers are nowhere near the shoulder buttons. I have to reach up with my middle finger or more likely reach down with my index finger. But it's fine. All right, there's one more. Forgot the dog. But easy peasy. Works great. I wouldn't have any problems playing Super Nintendo on this thing. Um, yeah, we don't need to run Super Mario. Well, let's try... I don't know which of the two games I just launched. Oh, there we go. I mean, if Super Nintendo ran fine, regular Nintendo should, too. that up. I did see some uh, pop in at the edge of the screen. I genuinely don't know if this game just does that. Uh, and I did notice a small frame drop, but again, I don't know if this game just does that. So I'm not going to pay too much attention to it. Let's try Neo Geo Pocket Color, huh? No, oh, it's backwards. I forgot SNK did that, because they're monsters. It's nice too because the screen resolution matches not perfectly it's there's still black bars on the top and bottom um, but it's actually pretty ideal for Neo Geo Pocket Color um, the biggest issue with that is you've got a d-pad instead of the um, click stick but it is what it is if you're okay with that then I mean it's not like you don't know that going in um, Let's discuss PSP. This thing comes with a PSP emulator, but PSP emulation is kind of difficult to do on hardware that is as powerful as this hardware is. This is, <laughs> you, you can tell me, or you can see it's already detecting that it's it's running slow and we're not even in game. Um, I wouldn't buy this thing for the PSP emulation. A, the form factor is like, the worst possible for PSP emulation, given the fact that this is almost, well, this is a square aspect ratio screen and PSP is very widescreen. Uh, not to mention we don't have an analog stick here. Um, well, I think that's about all we're missing actually, just the analog stick. Uh, but yeah, it's still not great.
I'll just skip through this. It really doesn't matter. It's all going to be the same. And you can hear the chop. I don't consider PSP to be playable on this. I mean, you can make it work with enough dedication, um, perseverance. Uh, maybe it's something that can be optimized. Maybe, uh, you know, going through the settings, you might be able to turn the graphics down or, or you know, turn on other cheats to try and get more frames out of this thing, but this is... It's not great. Granted, I haven't played this game on PSP in... probably 15 years? Um, but I don't remember it running like this. That being said, this isn't running in RetroArch, so we can't do the start and select thing. We have to use the home button. Uh, that being said, what was... Yeah, buddy. PlayStation emulation, on the other hand. PlayStation emulation is pretty good, so far at least. I've only tried the one game, but... Oh, that was weird. Runs great. I wouldn't mind playing through PlayStation games on this thing. Um, there aren't that many PlayStation games that I genuinely like. Oh, I didn't want Crash. Go back. I want Engine. Yes. This is one of the few PlayStation games that I like, but it's good. And it plays good, most importantly. Ah, oh, I messed up. Oh well. I would call this very playable. I don't know if it's running at a full 60, but it, it sure, certainly feels like it's running at the full frame rate that it's supposed to be running at. Thing is way better than it has any right to be at PlayStation emulation. I mean, I know that a PlayStation is really not that hard to emulate these days, but I don't know. This this just feels right on this console. Oh, no. jumped. Oh well. Whatever. Doesn't matter. You get the idea. Uh, I think that's about it. Um, yeah, this does have a Dreamcast emulator on it, but I couldn't think of any Dreamcast games that I wanted to play missing the 
triggers and the um, the thumbstick. That just didn't sound like a good experience to me, especially after the PSP emulation was so mediocre. I don't expect it to be any good. Even if it is good, it's it's this is the wrong form factor for those types of games. Um, otherwise, I think that covers just about every system I put on here. Game Boy, Game Boy Advance. All right. Yeah. Well, there you go. I guess that is the Retro Pixel Pocket. Um, again, I gotta say this. Yes, it's emulation, but it's genuinely not bad. If you want a dedicated device for these sorts of games, you know, if you want to play Game Boy and Game Boy Color games on it, this is ideal for that. Um, it'll also do Game Boy Advance pretty well. Um, shoot, Super Nintendo is pretty ideal as well. Um, it, it, if you want to play those sorts of games, this is... It, it's really hard to argue against something like this. Funny Playing is selling these things for 80 bucks right now. Um, and I... Like, they have it listed higher and it's like on sale for 80 but... This is the first day that they're available. 80, 80 is just the MSRP for this thing, and I'm fine with that. This, th that's a good price for this thing. If you wanted it only for Game Boy Color games, you know, only for playing like Pokemon Crystal and such, it gets better. Hang on. You can get, you can spend $80 on one of these bad boys, or you can spend $130 on an EverDrive GBX7 and then another few hundred dollars building a Game Boy Color to play it on. And what do you have at the end of the day? You know, effectively the same experience. Uh, if you're not playing on original carts, there is no real reason to play on a Game Boy if all you want is to play the games, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I have a ton of flash carts. I use them for testing and realistically, I when I'm playing games, I do play them off the cart, and I own carts for collection purposes, but that, that's not the way to do it. If all you care about is playing the games, that's not the cost-effective way, uh, and it's not even the best experience, because this is all DIY and several, several magnitudes more expensive than something like this. I am genuinely really happy with this. Um, I have checked out other emulation devices previously, specifically these two Ambernix and a MiU Mini, uh, but I did not do a video on the MiU Mini. I, I don't know. I didn't feel like I had anything to add to anything out there already. And these things are good. Like, this one is the bee's knees for Game Boy Advance just because the screen is just so ideal for that. Yeah, it's got extra buttons and you can run PlayStation games on it, pretty damn well. In fact, I think this thing does PSP way better than this does, um, but I haven't really tried it. Whereas this thing, I like using this one for PlayStation because the screen is just so good and the screen is popping out. What's going on? I'm going to have to address that later. Um, yeah, these are, these are good devices. Sure, but for Game Boy, man, psh, hard to beat. Anyway, that's about all I have. I'm not ending the video here. I've actually got quite a bit more I want to discuss. Uh, but I'm going to power this bad boy off because I want to show off something that Funny Plane sent me a while back. So I don't know exactly why they sent this to me, uh, but they sent a test mold for the retro pixel pocket i've had this thing i've been sitting on this for like a year and i had no idea what to do with it because like it's it's literally just the plastic housing i shoved a game boy pocket lens in there just to show off the difference in size between the lenses uh, but it's literally the exact same screen that is used in game boy pocket and game boy color backlight kits so for example these two units have identical screens in them this one's slightly shrunken down, running at a little bit lower resolution, but that does mean that the scaling is integer on this thing. The scaling on this thing, by default, is not integer scaling. You can modify 
like I said, if you poke around the uh, RetroArch configs, you can you can fix that, but it's not something that I've had time to mess around with too much at this time. But there you go, that's the screen. I want to reshell this thing, but, well, I want to take it apart, and while we're at it, let's reshell it. I, I want to be that guy who has the cool, unique yellow one. Uh, there's my screwdriver. I lost my bit. Oh no. Oh no. Maybe I can use the next size up. Yeah. That's why you only ever pull one bit out at a time. Don't don't do this. Don't leave bits on your desk. You'll lose them. If we take this bad boy apart, we can explore the innards a little bit. I did notice it was getting a little bit warm while playing it. Um, the SOC in this thing does put out a little bit of heat. Not unreasonably so, but unlike a Game Boy, which doesn't put out any heat at all that I've ever noticed. Six screws, and then it comes apart very, very easily. Attach the battery, which is of course gonna mean I have to reset the clock, but now we can get a good look at the um, board layout and the SOC for this thing. So here's our all winner A64-H. This is the SOC, this is run in the show here. We've got our two DDR3 RAM chips, probably 512 megabytes each. Try and get the part numbers in there just for posterity, I guess. Uh, up here, I'm guessing, is our EEPROM. That's our 8 gigabytes of storage. Uh, I have no idea what this is, but based on the fact that there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 inductors right next to it, I'm guessing this is the power management IC. Um, probably handles audio amplification as well, though maybe that's this chip here. I don't know. Requires more digging. The battery is in this little compartment here. Ooh, interesting. The mold is different. I wonder what they changed. So I'm looking at the shoulder buttons and there's these sh supports here that seem sheared off as well as uh, the shell here being shaved down. So I'm guessing this is not a retail unit. Uh, but rather like a, um, a sample. So hopefully the retail units feel a little bit better. Not that this one's bad, but... There's always room for improvement, I think. Pull the shoulder button bracket and shoulder buttons out. I think I'm going to stick with the gray buttons even though I'm reshelling it just because I don't have yellow shoulder buttons. So I'd rather have them all match. And this does indeed feel glued down. Oh, never mind. Clips are just very tight with that battery in there. So there is a solid, solid battery. Holy cow. It's got a lot of gravity to it. Nothing too special, uh, branded RetroPixel, but when you buy batteries in bulk, you can just tell the manufacturer to print whatever the heck you want on them. Uh, judging by the date code, this thing is almost a year old already which is, I guess that tracks. Um, I know they've been working on this thing for a long time and they've had the hardware mostly finalized, but not the software. Um, but the battery cover has all of the branding on the thing, which I thought was kind of weird. Like, no one sees this. If you want to see who makes it, you look at the back, not the battery cover. 
I guess they were trying to imitate the analog pocket with something like this. Which, I mean, it, it's clean, I'll give them that. And it looks good, but... I don't know, it's it's kind of weird to, fi to have to take the thing apart to figure out what it's even called. But, oop. Relatively standard battery, shouldn't be too difficult to replace, should the need arise. I'll mix and match. Because I can. Shoulder buttons are kind of a pain in the butt to get seated. So one of the things that's different with the yellow shell that I'm messing with right now is this was this yellow color is literally just what they had in the machine at the time. It's not, like, this isn't a color that they planned on selling, and if you look close, you can even see streaks of um, other colors in it, because that's just how they test um, injection molding. Uh, if we look at some of the other shells I have, you can see similar things, though, to a greater extent. You know, there's it's just this gray material, but there's some black and there's some white in there, and so on. It's, it's not mixed evenly. It's fine, but it's not mixed evenly. Uh, yeah. Shoot, I could do that. Just swap out the buttons, too. That wouldn't be half bad. Um, but Oh, yeah, sorry. This yellow is not the same Game Boy yellow. It's a little bit darker. Uh, and it's also not quite spice orange either. There it is. Spice orange is quite a bit darker. You know, just just for comparison, because I don't bother color grading any of my footage, so I know this is gonna be a little bit misleading, but that ain't too bad. Uh, it looks like they're using a custom power switch, which I guess I've known because I have the original sprue for this thing that I never broke the power switch off. It arrived like this with B and the power switch on the sprue and then the rest assembled. I, I don't know what was going on there, but anyway. Got two screws holding the motherboard in, it looks like. And I'm guessing there is a ribbon cable for the screen. Yep. I'm surprised they didn't do the same thing they did with their other console that I'm not supposed to talk about yet. Got a really nice speaker in here um, this thing does genuinely sound good it's like it, it it sounds way better than a lot of uh, Game Boy speakers do um, nice to see that they sprung for the gold plating on the contacts should last quite a while the front of the board is extremely uninteresting I'm guessing we have the wireless chipset for Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I don't know, some real tech jobby here. RTL, what is that? 8188EUS. But based on the fact that it's on the subboard and there's an antenna right there, I'm gonna assume it's for wireless. Um, but otherwise that's 
pretty straightforward. That ain't too bad. Mm -hmm. Fairly certain that's a Game Boy Pocket. Start and select. Where are my pocket buttons? So if you wanted to, yep, you can uh, grab some pocket parts and change the colors, at least of the start and select buttons. Yeah, those are identical. I don't see any reason why Funny Playing would bother changing that. Uh, D-pad, on the other hand, is different. So here, that's a bad example. Here is a stock Game Boy Pocket D-pad, whereas the Retro Pixel Pocket D-pad, a little bit bigger. You could probably get away with a Pocket D-pad if you had to, but it's it's very loose in there. I wouldn't. And then, of course, custom membranes for their custom buttons, and then custom face buttons because Game Boy Pocket never had four face buttons. It only had two. And that just leaves us with the screen. See, I told you it was the same screen. I already set that other one down. I have no idea where it went. Doesn't matter, though. Let's get the screen out of here. So ideally I'd be using a um, suction cup to pull on this, but I just don't have one. So I'm going to try preheating the adhesive a little bit with my hot air gun and hope for the best. Um, if I damage this screen, that's going to suck a lot, but you know, I, it's worth it for the cause, I guess. I can replace the LCD, but I can't replace this lens, not easily. A hot air station is set to 239C. I have no idea how reasonably calibrated it is, so I have no idea how accurate that is. But I will say, it's not that hot. Can we do the old twister Ernie? We certainly can. screen goes right to the edge of that, so I don't need to really pry along there. I'm going to stick that in there and try twisting the other side. Unfortunately, I can't push on it from the back because it's all plastic. too painful to get that out. There's really not a lot of adhesive holding it in. Oh, that is a very tight fit. That is nice. Yeah, 
Huh? Huh? All right. Let's continue the reassembly. I'm gonna use the <laughs> retail membranes. Throw the D-pad away though. There we go. All the buttons are keyed. You can only put them in there designated hole and only right side up. The membrane also is keyed. Uh, you see there's a flat spot on the top where it hits the screen and then a curved spot where it hits the speaker area. Looks like they had that worked out pretty early. Heat sink on the back of the SOC. I think that's a little bit of a weird place for it, but sure. That's not the right size bit. Oh, that's a lot better. Missing something? What's going on here? No, I'm not. I'm just an idiot. Okay. Ah, uh ah. -huh. Yeah, that looks pretty sick. I'm into that. I'm just gonna get all these started and then I'll send them home. I don't have to focus on keeping this thing sandwiched together so I don't lose buttons. Ah, I see one of the differences. Um, that doesn't fit at all. This rotary encoder is getting stuck. That needs to be fixed. This one's fine. I think we just need to shave away some of the front shell actually. But yeah, that's easy. We can do that.
Oh yeah. We need to pull a lot off that. Well, good thing this thing comes apart so easily. And I'm thinking, just to make that nice and clean, I'm gonna go do that on the Dremel, so I'll be right back. All right, cha-da! Uh, I just did a little by a little guess and check, and we're good now. I'm gonna plug that back in, screw it back together, and check and see if I broke anything. And even if I did, it's only $80 to replace. Which is Barely more than just the backlight kit in a Game Boy alone. This is not Funny Playing's first emulator console. I think it's the first one that they've sold dom um, internationally. They have sold a few domestically, and of course they're based in China, so unless you live there, you haven't gotten one. Um, so it's not like everything in this console is built up from scratch. They've done this before, and especially since they use a lot of their Game Boy molds for this thing. Um, imagine it wasn't too big of a deal to make something like this. Really helps bring the costs down. So one of my favorite things about this yellow shell compared to the gray one is that this one doesn't have any crooked text on the labels like the power switch because it doesn't have any text whatsoever. <laughs> thinking maybe this needs to get shaved down a little. Let's see how it goes together. Sure, I'm not making any assumptions about the fit. Okay, so you see how much cleaner that fits in here. It's nice and smooth, nice and flush. Whereas here, I'm gonna disconnect that for now. that in there and try and assemble it doesn't quite clear the power switch and it gets stuck so the easy solution is probably just to use this one Ooh, but it looks like it's the exact same part so I'm probably gonna have the exact same problem Okay, more modifications needed. That's fine. I will do that later. I don't want to spend the whole time. This video is already... Oh, yeah. Buttons feel nice. This video is already getting pretty uh, long in the tooth, as it were, so... I think I'll wrap it up here. Yeah, that's pretty good. It'll go together. She'll be right.
I just gotta figure out the cleanest way to get that switch back in there without damaging something. Maybe we just need to make the opening bigger. Ah, okay, there it is. It doesn't fit in this slot. Oh, well that's why, okay. So they just cut a uh, slot in there. So we'll go do that now. Hmm. Actually, I don't even have to go anywhere for that. I can't really do that on the Dremel because it's not supported. Um, uh, my cutters don't really fit in there. Uh, okay, never mind. I'll figure something out. I'll be right back. Alright, I tried the Dremel anyway. Um, I accidentally plunged a little bit too deep, but you can't tell from the outside, and the switch fits nicely now, so I think we're good. I found something I was able to just support the thing from back here. And then cut, and... Boom. missing a screw? No, it's down there by my pokey tool. Let's see if I broke it. Oh, gotta hold that longer, I forgot. Hey! Nice. Sixteen oh one. Is it really that late? No, it probably reset the time because I had the battery out. Yeah, it did. It is definitely not December 31st, 2009. Well, like I said, um, easiest way by far to do that is to just put it on the interwebs. Let it refresh. Go on, you can do it. Oh, you know what? While we're waiting for that, let's, um... See, I don't know where the cursor is. I want to flip that on. But I genuinely have no idea. Like, 
Like, it's just so faint. Uh oh, that's still getting stuck. I can unstick it, but... Oof, that needs a little bit more work. I'll, I'll play with it off camera though. Okay, well I'm struggling with that. That's not gonna work. Um, date and time. There we go. All you gotta do, just turn off automatic, turn it back on again, then it refreshes. And there we go. And I suppose let's end here. I'm gonna show off the stock scaling for Game Boy, maybe, there it goes. With 240p test suite, because of course I have 240p test suite on here, why wouldn't I? Um, but I want to go over to the full screen stripes, that way you can see that the vertical scaling is not even. Um, it's fine, I don't notice it unless I look for issues, but it's not even. Same thing with the horizontal scaling, it's actually kind of weird, there's like this vertical pattern in it, but Whatever, there you go, and then turn on both, and... I don't even know if the phone's gonna focus on that, but... That is the default scaling for the Game Boy emulator. Uh, Game Boy Advance... I forgot to load up 240p test suite for that, but... I think that one's a little bit better. But either way, there we go. It's looking good! So that is a, um, a first look at this retro pixel pocket emulator thing from uh, Funny Playing. I genuinely really like it, and for the price they're offering it, offering it at, I think it's a really good deal. Um, granted, I think there's still a lot of improvement to be made in the software. Uh, like I said, just navigating the UI can be a chore at times, but outside of the UI, it's totally usable, totally fine. Uh, so, you know, once once you get in-game, there's really, really no issues. Um, but if the default settings don't tickle your fancy, um, good luck, I guess, because you'll have to figure out how to reset that. But um, beyond that, it's fine. Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't get one of these things hoping that in the future the UI is going to be better, because they're for sale now and the UI right now isn't as good as it could be. Um, maybe one day, but don't buy it based off of a promise, you know, buy it based off of what it actually delivers. And genuinely for 80 bucks, like, I I have a hard time finding flaws for that in that price point, especially when you compare this thing to some of the other emulator consoles on the market, or even just a similarly spec'd Game Boy for playing Game Boy games. Um, but anyway, that's all I've got for now. I think I'm going to leave it here. I will throw some links in the description. Uh, I will link to Funny Playing's website if you want to try and grab one of these. I believe Retro Game Repair Shop will be carrying them as well, but they currently are not, uh, at least as of the time of filming. Um, but if and when that changes, I will go back and update, update the description. And um, otherwise... Thanks for watching, thanks for sticking with me, especially as I did some um, sketchy stuff with the, uh, <laughs> with the test shot housing that I had, but that's fun. It's all in good fun. Anyway, I'll catch you all next time. Peace!